Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Francisco Cantu and I'm very happy to be here with you all. Today we are going to be discussing an essay that got accepted to the University of Chicago. But before I get started, I want to talk about some admission statistics. If you did not know, the University of Chicago is one of the toughest institutions to get into in the United States for the class of 2027. The acceptance rate was 4.8%, making it one of the most selective institutions in the country. Well, out of 36, the average accepted student at the University of Chicago had a 34 or a 35 in the ACT. And then as far as the SAT out of 1600, the, the average students had between a 1510 and a 1560. When we're talking about rankings, the US World News, I believe, had them ranked at number 12 in the US. And obviously, if you look at different rankings, they're going to have them placed at different points. When we look at notable alumni, Carl Sagan, famous astrophysicist, Barack Obama was a professor at the University of Chicago. He's from Chicago. David Rockefeller, who was one of the third generation, I believe, of the Rockefeller family, one of the most influential families in the United States. And what we will be reviewing today is a supplemental essay that is specific to the University of Chicago from a student that was accepted. The prompt reads, the mentis shrimp can perceive both polarized light and multispectral images. They have the most complex eyes in the animal kingdom. Human eyes have color receptors for three colors, red, green, and blue. The mantis shrimp has receptors for 16 types of colors, enabling them to see a spectrum far beyond the capacity of the human brain. Seriously, how cool is a mantis shrimp? And the actual question is, what might they be able to see that we cannot? What are we missing? What are they looking for, right? Because if you're looking at a common application prompt, it'll be very straightforward. Some supplemental essays might ask you, why Michigan? Why UNC? Why XYZ school? And with those essays, it's pretty simple to understand what they are looking for. They're looking for a good fit for the student and the university. However, whenever you encounter essays that are a little bit more abstract or with a little bit less direction and more open for interpretation, there are a couple of points that I want to start off by recommending or sharing with you all or, or, or letting you know that you should keep in mind because these are the concepts that the university wants to learn about you through your writing. So with an essay like this, you should be, first of all, looking at conveying some sort of creativity or try to be original. Clearly, if they were asking for something more straight up or something more math-based or science-based, they would want a further explanation that would show your intelligence in a very straightforward type of fashion. But this being such a non-binary problem and something that is very open for interpretation, there is a degree of creativity that you want to display in your writing. So another concept that is very prevalent in top tier institutions when it comes to what they want to look for in their students through their writing is something called intellectual vitality or intellectual curiosity. And what that simply means is learning and love of learning for the sake of learning itself. Next concept, critical thinking. We've all heard of different job interviews that ask you, how many windows do you calculate that are in New York? Or how many taxis do you calculate that are in the world? Or, or things like that, that are not necessarily meant to get an exact answer, but rather test your capacity for critical thinking, right? They want to see how you can grasp a concept, a query, and how you can rationalize through it, or they wanna make sure that you can think things through and that it's a good ballpark and that you have you know, the cognitive ability to think about problems logically. And then would be a personal connection if you can display how your personal values will align to those that the university looks for or, or, or values in their applicants. Research and knowledge, how knowledgeable are you about the, about the topic that you're writing about and about the university itself. Next up, the quality of the writing. That one's a given. You want to make, they want to make sure you can spell, you can use your punctuation and your grammar properly. And finally, there is a degree, even though it's not as explicit as why this university, there is still a degree through your writing of showing a fit with the school that you want to display. Okay. So those are the main components that you should keep at the forefront of your mind when you have an essay like this. So let's go ahead and get started with the reading. On the outside, they are vibrantly colorful yet creepy crustaceans with the ability to break your finger without hesitation. On the inside, however, they possess a superpower that not even super, uh, Superman has, the gift of supersight. Given that humans see using three different sets of rods and cones and we perceive only visible light, it is no surprise that these badass deep sea bone crushers are able to see much, much, much more. Think about it. 
With one set of color receptors, we can see one color. With two, the scope of our vision expands exponentially. With three, even more so. With 16 receptors, there is absolute certainty that every variety of color, sensation, and wavelength is detected. So the first thing that we see on this opening paragraph is the concept of critical thinking. Basically explains that if we can see red, green, and blue, and those three colors alone give us the whole spectrum of sight that we experience, then if we increase from three to 16, then the colors that we're able to see or the perception of the, 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 the visual stimuli that we're able to assimilate exponentially grows, right? So there's nothing groundbreaking here or nothing super telling about the university or about the student, but there is a common grasp or an understanding as to what you are talking about. Basically, it's showing I am intelligent enough to understand the prompt, intelligent enough to build that basic block so that I can span further on it as I progress through this essay. So when we go back to the concepts that the university is looking for, that admissions officers are looking for, you know, the concept of critical thinking, the concept of research and knowledge, and the concept of quality of writing are all present on this first paragraph. But so far, we haven't seen yet what makes this essay so special. So let's continue reading. Their ability to see colors that are unimaginable to humans must mean that they can detect just about anything there is to perceive on this world. Their eyes have become super organs capable of retrieving information from another plane of sensation and possibly even the fourth dimension. With the supreme ability to understand and see, these little critters can see nothing short of tra trial famadorians straight out of UChicago alum Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse Five. What we do here is we elevate our level of consciousness and we go from talking about just colors to, okay, on a different plane, we can start thinking about how visual perception can expand to sensations and could expand to a fourth dimension. So again, it takes the level of understanding of what we're talking about to a higher degree and to a higher level, okay? But that's not the coolest part or the most valuable part of this second paragraph, but rather, earlier we talked about personal connection, we talked about research and knowledge, we talked about school fit. And one of the best things about this essay, as we'll come to figure out throughout the, the piece, is that there is a relationship or there is an understanding as to, okay, where am I applying to college? Okay, the University of Chicago. Look, I have enough of an understanding of what I'm writing about and where I'm applying to that I'm able to pull from my own personal reading experiences, which by the way, it's a subtle way of saying, hey, I read, which nowadays not many students can say that they do that recreationally, or even if it was for school, this shows that, okay, well, I still remember what I read about for school. Uh, but you also add the additional layer of relating it to a university alum, which again, has some, some sprinkles, some bonus points that you can stand on as you're trying to display why you want to go to a particular school. Speaking of Slaughterhouse Five, the only real explanation behind Billy Pilgrim's, an embodiment of Mr. Vonnegut himself, state of being unstuck in time would be the fact that he himself is a mantis shrimp. Let me explain. If you haven't read the book, Slaughterhouse Five, this might be a little bit confusing. So for some context, the book is about this dude named Billy Pilgrim, who he says an embodiment of Mr. Vonnegut himself. So I'm sure if you read this book in your AP Lit or AP Lane class, you saw that it was a representation of the author's life, whatever, whatever, whatever. But the whole point here is that the student uses this as a metaphor to relate it to the prompt while presenting a new narrative ploy, which is I'm going to draw parallels between the novel that I read, again, showing that I read, showing that I'm smart, but I'm going to use this to further expand on my understanding of the prompt, what it's asking, and then use those narrative ploys to keep the audience engaged while still, again, sprinkling my knowledge of the university. First, Billy's main drive throughout World War II was survival much like a mantis shrimp that inherited mega pincers and hammers, thanks evolution, Billy did whatever he could to survive. Typically, mantis shrimp crack open their prey, small crabs and the like, with an ultra-fast jab, left hook, from their raptorial appendage, right uppercut, in order to access the goods inside, knockout. Billy and some of the men he was stationed with had to knock out German guards in order to survive although clearly holding back for the sake of not blowing his cover as a godly mantis shrimp. We can see that no matter how hard he tries, Vonnegut cannot escape who or what he really is. 
So there's a lot of things to unpack here. Number one, the first thing that stands out for me is the quality of the writing. Why? Because not only is the student, again, expanding on this narrative device of, okay, I'm going to draw parallels to further justify my claim. But if you see in this particular sentence, much like Mantis Shrimp that inherited mega pincers and hammers, parenthesis, thanks evolution, then goes on to expand a little bit more parenthesis, small crabs and the like, add more context, left hook, exclamation mark, add more context, parenthesis, right uppercut. So when you're reading this, there is a sentence structure that is recurring, that reads well, that if you are a college essay reader who has read 100 essays today or however many, you won't get tired because there is a pace on this paragraph that flows really well and that is not dreadful to read, all right? So that is one concept. The other concept is the fact that you are explaining your understanding of, again, the anatomy of the mantis shrimp. And even if you are not a marine biologist, this is basic stuff that you can research about so that when you're writing it, it sounds like you know what you're talking about. So you're displaying another layer or another uh, degree of intelligence when you're doing that. Next, at another point in Pilgrim's life, he is a successful optometrist and studies the functions of the eye. Ironically enough, that is exactly what a mantis shrimp in human form would be. Well, aside from a boxer or a knight with a built-in lance. It seems Vonnegut was curious about his own abilities and the extent of the power of his 16 different color receptors, so he decided to dedicate his life to self-study. He was interested in learning about himself purely for the sake of learning. A true UChicago student. This is probably my favorite paragraph of the whole essay because not only does the narrative continue in terms of its structure and its intent, but it displays the whole concept of school fit and the whole concept of having a connection and an understanding of the institution that you're applying to. Finally, the most glaringly obvious way Vonnegut blows his cover as a mantis shrimp is by sharing his encounters with the, with the trial Famadorians. Realistically, the t probably didn't abduct him for fear of being seen. However, they most likely did kidnap his exhibit mate Montana Widwack. Using his ability to see past our dimension and into the fourth, the home of the tea fellows he witnessed the duration of Miss Wildwack's stack stay through a tesseract linking space and time. Now, the reason he feels as though he, like our tea friends, is unstuck in time is not that he's a trial famadorian. Instead, it is for the simple reason that he, like every other mantis shrimp, can look into mirroring dimensions and gaze at realities of themselves further ahead and behind in time. Using this mystic power adopted through a perfect evolutionary line, he is then able to recount his story to us and even predict his own death by a ray gun or strike from another mantis shrimp, as in the perspective of in it has the same result of immeasurable pain and utter annihilation. With this final paragraph, there are some things that I love and there are some things that I could see how a reader considers uh, an area of improvement. So first, what I do like is, again, the, the quality of the writing stays strong. One of the best parts of this essay is the fact that you answer the prompt. I believe that the pace was good. I believe that the content was good. Maybe I would have made it a little bit more expository in certain parts when talking about the novel instead of assuming that the reader knows about it by memory. But other than that, there is a reason why this student was accepted at one of the most prestigious universities in the country. If you're looking for more of a top level overview of the whole college application process, whether that is for the admissions aspect of it or the financing aspect of it through, again, completing out the bureaucratic forms, the FAFSA, the CSS profiles, state-sponsored programs, private scholarships. Well, there is a free resource. You can go to the description of this video and you'll see a link for the free presentation. And in that presentation is an hour long. Again, it's information that's more pertinent to, okay, here's how you make your list of colleges. Here's how you develop an appropriate study strategy for the SAT, ACT, all those things we cover in that free presentation. We talk about the best college aid program for those of you who are looking for more of a counseling service. Well, stick around for the last 15 minutes of that presentation because I talk about what best college aid includes, how it works, the logistics, and everything else that you need to know about the program. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all. Later, have a great night.